Overwatch 2. Here's what I knew. There are heroes, and every hero has a different role. Oh, and I never played Overwatch 1, so you could say that I'm brand new to the Overwatch universe. But it couldn't be too hard, right? Can I play? Can I play a game, dude? I don't like this game! Okay, dude. Okay, dude. Reset, mental reset. I decide to hop right into ranked to get my feet wet. Spoiler alert, I needed to win 50 quick play matches before I could even think about ranked. At this point, I committed myself to 30 days of intense gameplay with the goal of getting to platinum. I don't know if it's a stretch, but we'll see. What could possibly go wrong? I had no idea where I was going, so I just followed these guys. I was not sure how to win the game. I lost my first match, and I lost my second match, then... I even lost my third match. I kept dying to abilities I had no idea even existed. Maybe Overwatch 2 wasn't for me. It was so different from any other game I've played before. It's like a chess game dressed up as a first person shooter, but with fewer pawns and more exploding robots. But then I remembered why I looked at Overwatch in the first place. I needed a game that would spark joy and fill my competitive itch. And let's be honest, my therapist did say trying new things is good for me. So here I am, doctor's orders. So I decided to give the game an honest try, but this time I would actually do some research. I even enrolled myself in some good old YouTube university and watched all the guides I could find on the game. I learned about stuff like the four different game modes, flashpoint, capture objectives, push, push a robot, Escort, escort a payload. Hybrid, a combination of capturing a point and escorting a payload. Two, jumping actually makes you really predictable and easy to shoot, so it's better to just strafe and juke your opponent's shot. Three, certain combos with heroes, like using soldier's heal pad right before you all, can actually animation cancel it and deal a ton of damage while keeping your health up. Or there's an abundance of heroes, each with their own unique skill set, and some heroes are better than others, or in other words, they can counter one another. It's like rock, paper, scissors, but with more explosions. And I need just the hero to carry me. Soldier 76. My 50 quick play matches were completely chaotic and I had no clue what was going on. There was so much to learn, but it was so fun. I won 5 and lost 5 of my ranked placements. I expected to be placed in bronze, but to my surprise, I ended up being placed in silver 3. This meant that I could completely skip over bronze, and from what I've heard, bronze is like a chaotic spin-off series of Overwatch where they're not actually even playing the game. So skipping that low elo felt like winning the lottery. That is, until my first real silver matches. That's when reality set in. Everyone knew how to properly use their abilities and ultimates. Meanwhile, I still felt like a tourist lost in a big city without a map. Imposter syndrome set in. Surely I wasn't placed in the right rank. Maybe I deserved to be in bronze. When we actually won a game, I felt like I wasn't really contributing. I felt like I was getting carried by my team while I just played the role of the enthusiastic cheerleader. I managed to maintain a 50-50 win rate in silver. I was playing with other players who had hundreds of hours under their belts, but I had set a goal to get to platinum within 30 days, and I used 8 of them for my placement matches. This meant that I only had 22 days left to climb all the way through silver and gold. This was daunting because all I knew was see enemy, shoot enemy, and even then I was losing most of my 1v1s. It was like my opponents had read the rule book and I was stuck with the cliff notes. I needed to unlock the key of knowledge that would allow me to break through into gold and eventually platinum. I needed to compress the experience that players get from thousands of hours of gameplay into a fraction of time. That's when the universe did something amazing. Someone joined my discord server I mentioned they saw that I was building up some bad habits, and they offered to do some free coaching. It was too good to be true. This was perfect timing. Maybe they could help me build the confidence and skill I so badly needed. To my surprise, Darth Cookie was an esports coach, with experience in Grandmasters 1 as a support player, and he also had a top 6 finish in the top German collegiate league and about 5 years of coaching experience. My prayers 
were answered. He was going to help my silver ass climb the ranks. The very first session was unbelievably helpful. We discussed four very important keys that low elo players neglect that prevent them from climbing out of the low ranks of bronze, silver, and gold. The first concept we talked about was that every map has essentially three lanes, the main, the left, and the right. As a damage roll, Darth Cookie drilled it into me to always be on the right or the left lane to create what's called off angle pressure. It's like flanking, but fancier. Essentially, if I was shooting the enemy tank from the right, they would have to decide whether to look at me to block my shots or keep focusing on the main push from my team or maybe even retreat and panic. I never thought about this before. It was like discovering the secret tunnels of a maze. The second concept Darth sprinkled on the cake was that if the enemy team falls back, I move forward. If they push ahead, I retreat faster than a cat dodging a cucumber. I essentially should always stay within what's called my effective range at all times. It's like finding that sweet spot at a concert where the music sounds just right, except I'm the one making all the noise. It's too easy that they just wipe you completely if you stay up there and not really get any trade kills or stuff. Like here, and if you see an Ana here, just shoot at her immediately. If there is nobody there, then you can swing wide. Mm. The last but most important thing that Darth taught me was that in Overwatch, setting up before the fight is crucial. In this situation, I remember every map has three lanes. That leaves me with the left and the right lane. But on Junkertown, positioning myself in the left lane here is key. From there, I can prevent the enemy team from recontesting and maybe even pick one of their players. This strategic move can really turn the tide of my game. For the next 14 days, I honed in on one of those three critical skills. One, understanding the map lanes, two, mastering my effective range, and three, setting up strategically before a fight. With these lessons at the forefront of my mind, my game sense began to shine. To my surprise, we made it to gold. Some matches were messy, but it was a moment of pride. But most importantly, I trusted my coach. Armed with newfound skills and confidence, I poured everything into reaching platinum. For two weeks straight, I grinded game after game, slowly but surely. My win rate climbed from 50% to 60%. That meant statistically I was on the rise, but however, with only seven days left to hit platinum and sitting at gold three, the pressure was on. If I was going to make platinum in a week, I needed Darth Cookie to shine a light on what I was still missing. And our final call for this challenge turned out to be truly eye-opening. The final piece of the puzzle, this was what I needed to reach platinum in just 30 days. Throughout my matches, I was so focused on refining my mechanics mechanics and gameplay that I overlooked one of the game's most crucial fundamentals. There were moments where our team secured a pick, but instead of pressing our advantage, we hesitated and allowed the enemy to regroup, losing our edge. In contrast, when we lost a teammate or two, we sometimes stubbornly contested fights we couldn't win, only to stagger and make matters worse. Okay. Because this in turn will, by the way, help your other stuff. Just right. have your awareness and and having more of a feel when you can push, when you can't push, what is going on overall in the game, this will help a lot, a lot, a lot. It sounded almost too simple. The kill feed. In reality, the game constantly feeds you vital information and you need to act upon it. For instance, when your team scores a pick and you gain a 4v5 advantage, that's your cue to push forward and up high pressure without overextending. In contrast, if you see that you're down one or two players, it's a red light to hold back, regroup defensively, or to retreat to avoid staggering. We are 25 days into the challenge now, currently sitting at gold one. Never played with this much intensity before. The past few weeks have been a deep dive into educational content, soaking up strategies from pro player matches. I felt the momentum building. Everything I'd learned over the past 30 days was coming together, giving me a fresh perspective. I started to connect the dots I've never seen before, and with five days left on the clock, I queued into the game that would make or break it all. It was Junker Town. I picked Soldier. We started on attack. The match was nail-bitingly close, and the enemy team 
pushed us to overtime on the final push. Big B, big B. Okay, wait. I can just set up maybe. Please, 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 heals. Oh, big ult. <laughs> stairs bombs, please. I didn't know where the stairs were. In the end, we won 3-2. to two. Would I reach platinum? Anticipation filled the air as I awaited my rank announcement. And then it happened. I was placed into plat 5. After 25 days of grinding through ranked matches, I finally reached my goal. I was ecstatic. I did it. I actually did it. But after a few hours, the excitement faded. It felt strange. I expected to be over the moon, but instead, I felt just like I did at the beginning of the challenge. Did I need to reach Diamond, Master, or even Grandmaster to truly feel accomplished? Or was it just the thrill of the chase? Uh, that can't be it. Despite my mixed feelings, I still hadn't itched to play more. Tracer, anyone? Cheers, love.